We suffer more in imagination than in reality. Seneca said that a long time ago. To be fair, he said it in Greek, and all we really know is that he wrote it down, not that he actually said it. But this week, after a couple weeks hiatus, I want to talk about this phrase and how we can differentiate between our reality and the fiction that we create for ourselves, our imagination. How could we possibly mistake our imagination for a reality? Isn't reality consistent and measurable? Well, the problem is that we think, therefore we are. Descartes pointed this out, saying that the only thing we know for certain is that we exist. The world that comes to us through our senses could be a total illusion, manufactured by some carnivorous computer program, or we could be in the imagination of intergalactic children playing with us as if we were toys. Anything is possible, but all Descartes and I know is that the being that experiences things thinks it exists. The problem with that measurable reality, the touch, taste, smell, sight, and sound, is that it's going through the same filter as all of our thoughts, feelings, and imagination. They're all mixed together in the same bucket, and our feeble little minds mistake imagination for sensate experience. One clear example of this is anxiety. Let's say you have a deadline, say a YouTube video to be released at a specific point. The reality is there are a certain number of things you have to do before the week is out in order to meet your deadline. That's measurable, actionable, and simple. Then we start to wonder, what happens if? What happens if we miss our deadline? What happens if it's crap? And we start to imagine the consequences of these potential disasters. A lot of people, myself included, mistake these imagined consequences for inevitabilities or things that have already happened. But the reality is that you've just spent a day worrying about an imagined problem and you're no closer to meeting your deadline. There's a famous song by Baz Luhrmann where he says, Don't, Don't worry, worry about, about the future. future. Or worry, but know Enough. that worrying is as effective as trying to solve an algebra equation by chewing bubblegum. The real troubles in your life are apt to be things that never crossed your worried mind. The kind that blindsides you at 4 p.m. on some idle Tuesday. It's true. Any reasonable person would concede to that immediately. But implementing it? Now that's a different story. Because we humans hate the idea that we are helpless about most things. I had a fascinating experience this week reminding me of how helpless I am and how hopeless worrying is. For those of you who don't know, this is low. This is where I live. We purchased her for a few thousand dollars eight months back and have been living in her ever since. And it has saved us an enormous amount of money not to have to pay rent. Without her, we wouldn't have been able to travel for so long and would have had to work a lot sooner. The mobility that Lola provides us is invaluable. On Monday, we were worrying about what to do with our time. We have a destination we need to get to in a couple weeks, but we have time to fill in between. We were worrying about how to get to Milford Sound and enjoy the fjordlands on the idle Tuesday morning when we noticed the wheel squeaking as we left our roadside stop. After a bit of inspection, I determined that it must be a rock stuck between the brake and the wheel. A couple minutes down the road, the wheel stops. Luckily, there wasn't anybody behind us when the van suddenly stopped. Luckily, there was nobody in the oncoming lane when the van veered into it. Luckily, the wheel let go and let us roll to the pullover spot. And luckily, we had service on our phone to call a tow truck. Now, we are helpless. We have to do whatever we have to do with the resources we have access to. Unluckily, we're in Queenstown, one of the most expensive cities in New Zealand. Unluckily, there are only two tow truck companies in Queenstown, both of whom will charge us $300 to get back into town. Unluckily, the garage can't see us until Thursday and charges us to keep the van in their parking spot. And unluckily, we have to spend more of our dwindling money on hostels. I don't say any of this to complain, I say it to paint a picture. We have no control over what has already happened or what will happen. The situation reminds me what is outside of our control. 
the damage already done to the wheels, the money we have to spend to fix it. But it also reminds me what things are in my control. Making educated guesses and choosing the best hostel for the least cost. Stephen Covey, author of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, calls this your circle of influence. Alcoholics Anonymous asks their members to accept their powerlessness. The Serenity Prayer helped me to accept the things I cannot change and help me change the things I can. The Tao Te Ching, can you deal with the most vital matters by letting them take their course? All of these different life philosophies point this out to us, and many of us get it, sure. But then we go back to fretting about this or that. It takes wisdom to know when doing things, planning and preparing is important, and when it's just pissing in the wind. I wish I could give you more actionable tips, paint a clearer picture for you, but I spent all week worrying about the van, and it didn't help.